Okay. Do a mic test? Mic check. All right. Let me see which one this is. Yep. Okay. So now we should be getting picked up now. Mic check. Yeah, we should be good. I'm glad there you go. said so. Hmm? I'm glad you said so. Okay. Okay. See? Right, check. Yeah, because I was just going to keep it on. <laughs> so that this volume wasn't going to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like now. And that was going to be bad because I was going to think they can. Yeah, well, two are always better than one. All right, man. So we're going to go ahead. Peace to everybody that's on the phone line. <clears throat> Welcome to Wednesday night Q and A. Israel, the Church of Jesus. We're gonna ask that you sisters have your heads covered and brothers uncover your heads, and we're gonna open up for Bible study. Go ahead, bro. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It was this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The the and the power. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, give us one quick second. All right, there we go. It froze up. All right, peace to everybody. <clears throat> uh, we have now opened up. We will now open up for live uh, questions and answers. Do we have anybody on the phone line with any questions or comments? And peace to you guys this evening. Do we got any questions or comments on the phone line? All right. No, I don't have anything right now. All right, that's cool. I don't know about anybody else that may be on the line. Well, we we do have one on the uh, online, so we'll go ahead and take brother. I guess this is brother Joseph Allen. And it says, what should an individual do who fell on hard times, can't afford to tie? All they have is enough to get themselves to their next paycheck. Should they just give what they can? That's a great question. Um, and so I guess the first thing that I want to do is just establish what, what tithing is. Um, and then we'll look at what he's actually asking. Um, and tithing is what we're going to find that the Bible has declared the necessary or deemed amount that God is asking you to give of your increase. Like, that's really what tithing is. Like, you are giving of what you work for, what you earn. You're giving a percentage of that back to the Lord. And we're going to read that. Um, this, uh, you must be there already. Mm -hmm. Are you? Oh, okay. I didn't know I see you turn. I'm like, hey, participate. I ain't mad at you. Just one second. We're going to go and find the scripture where it tells us to uh, tithe to start with. And then we'll work from there. Um, And it says quite a bit. Uh, Let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Trying to give us where it's actually giving us a commandment. Let's check out 10. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, well, let's do it like this until I find that particular scripture. Let's go to Genesis 14, and we're going to see one of the first actual acts of tithing. And then we'll, I'll, I should be able to find my scripture by then, where it actually commands us. And that way we won't have to have no dead time on it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go to Genesis 14, and we'll go one other place while I look. But we're going to go to Genesis 14, and we're going to start at verse um, verse 17. So this is actually, what, what we're about to see right here is actually going to predate the laws of Moses of what actually takes place. So this is Abraham and this is going to be um Abraham and the Lord. So go ahead and start at Genesis chapter 14 and verse uh 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chalamor and of the kings that were with him at the valley of she Sheba, which is the king's dell, and Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine uh -huh. and he was the priest of the most high God uh -huh. and he blessed him and said blessed be Abram of the most high God possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high God which have oh, delivered yeah, thine enemies into thine hands uh -huh. Keep reading. And, and he gave him tithes of all alright hey we got it I'm going to ask that if you're not Especially while we are uh, answering the qu questions, if you can mute your phones, please. Hello. Hey, let me see if I can figure out how to use this dog phone. Oh. Hey, can we can we get you to mute your phone, please? Because we can hear you. All right, so we're in Genesis chapter 14, and we was reading about how the king of Sodom went out to meet after he returned from the slaughter of Shaldemar and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shiva, which is the king's there. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. So he bringing it out to Abraham, and he was priest of the Most High God. So this Melchizedek was the priest. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Brother JD. Yes, sir. Are you? Yes, sir. I thought you was on. And what's today's date? Today is the third of April. Uh, and you wasn't on last week. Nope. Oh. I just couldn't find the phone number. I just couldn't see. Well, you can run with it then. You can run with it then, cause I didn't even see. I didn't see no schedule. You, yeah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? It was yeah. it wasn't no schedule, so I thought you was just all last week, so I was just picking up from to this week. I, I, I thought I was listening to a recording. You were keeping busy. Oh, no, it's all good. Well, let me answer this question while you, huh? Yeah, go ahead and finish the answer, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Yeah, about, yeah, let me go ahead and deal with this. We, I'm, I'm looking at the tithe, and then after we look at the tithe, and then I'm just going to turn it over to you. Sounds good, man. All right, then, that's good. All right, so at any rate, so we back here at, at Genesis chapter 14, and we look at, we picking it up at verse 17, and what we, or 17, at 18 and 19, and what we're seeing is that did Abraham pay tithe, and this is like the first time that you see a tithe or anything like that being given from anybody to the Lord, and we're going to look at that one more time, and then we're going to predate this even. So it was Genesis 14 and 17, and the king of Sodom went out to meet after his return from the slaughter of the Shal of Shaldemar and of the kings that were with him, and at the valley of Shiva, which is in the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the Most High God. And oh, So this Melchizedek was the priest. Abraham going to bring him the tithe. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, Verse 20, and blessed be the most high God, which have delivered thine enemy into thy hands. And he gave him tithe of all he had. So 
when Abraham, Abraham was the first person who gave a tithe, and we saw that he gave it to the Lord of all that he had. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, and then we're going to look at a couple more scriptures, and we're not going to definitely be all night with this. Hebrews chapter 7. And let's pick it up in verse uh, verse 4. Pick it up in verse 4. When you get there, go ahead. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the gave the tenth of the spoil. Right. So we see in here that Abraham, and this he he's he's referring, like if we would have went up higher, verse one, it says, "For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him." So he's talking about that particular subject. So when he get down to verse 4, he was like, now consider how great this man uh, was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. So the tithe that we saw was a tenth. This is what Abraham was giving him. Verse 5. And, and verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. Right. So now we're seeing that according to the law. Now. We, the, the Levites are the ones who are supposed to take the tithes mm -hmm. from the people. Now, what we saw in Genesis chapter 14 was before we ever little, picked up Levites. Little, little, right. And it was Abraham. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand, Abraham is really the father of our faith. Mm -hmm. So the law just came to Israel as a guidance on how to govern a nation. But the reality is, we doing what Abraham does. And that's what Paul was trying to teach. So we seeing that Abraham paid a tenth. And we also seeing that it was commanded of them to take a tenth. And my Bible is giving me a scripture reference. And I got another one that I found. But before we get there, we're going to keep reading. Go ahead. That is of their brethren, yeah. though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Uh -huh. But he whose descent is not counted from, uh, from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise. All right. So basically what he was saying is, the commandments say that the tithe go to Levi, but this person received the tithe from Abraham. He greater than Levi is really what he's mm -hmm. getting at. But let's go to the scripture here and see if this is where the commandment is. If not, I got another one. Uh, Numbers chapter 18, and we're going to still get to Brother Joseph's actual question, which is what should an individual do who fell on hard times and can't afford the tithe? So the first thing we're trying to do is establish what tithing is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then once we do that, then we can redirect it back to the next part of the question. Is all they have is enough to get themselves to their next paycheck should they just give what they can. Um, so we're going to look at a few things. That's an excellent question. I appreciate that, Joseph. And as far as the stream is concerned, that'll be the one we do for the night. So let's go to uh, where we say we're going. Uh, you said numbers 18. Numbers 18 and pick it up at verse 21 and let's see what that say. Let's see what that says. Yeah. Number 18 and 21. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh-huh. Now, that's not really saying for you to tie right there. Now, I, I do know some specific spots, but I'm really looking for maybe just the first place where it was actually commanded. But let's let's look at another spot. Let's go to, let's skip down to verse, thus speak of the Lord. Skip down to verse 26. Let's see what that says. Thus speak unto the uh, to, to Levites and say unto them, when ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for, the, for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up and he's offering of it for the, for the Lord. Even a tenth part of the of the tithes. Right, okay. So he telling them they are supposed to be the one that's collecting the tithes from the people, the tenth from the people. Now, let's look at a couple more scriptures here in this law. Leviticus twenty seven and three. <clears throat> Leviticus twenty seven and thirty. I'm sorry. Let's see what that say. And then we'll look at another one. Um uh, well, we'll look at this, but it's okay. Let's pick it up at verse twenty eight. 
Leviticus 27 to verse 28. And when you get there, go ahead and read. Notwithstanding no devoted thing, that a man shall devote unto the Lord all that he has, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possessions, shall be sold or, or redeemed. Uh -huh. Every devoted every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord. So, like, that would be like if I dedicated some or if I, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, let's say this cow, I'm like, man, this cow, you know, I'm devoting this cow to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then I can't turn around and sell so, the cow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'm saying it's the Lord's, I can't, I can't, I'm not supposed to do nothing else with it. Go ahead, verse 29. None devoted, which shall be devoted of man, shall be redeemed, but shall surely be put to death. Uh -huh. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Okay, go ahead. If a man will will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add there thereto the fifth part thereof. All right, so... Now, that's another thing that we learn in here, too, while we're looking at it. So, if you need to take any of your tithe of your tent, then you were supposed to, when you replaced it. So, the idea is, or what we're seeing here, if you don't have your complete tithe, right? Mm -hmm. Then that means, and if any man will at all redeem all of his tithe, that means like borrowing on your own, mm -hmm. on the Lord money, ain't your money. Mm -hmm. He should add there a, a fifth part. So that's just so that means like if yo if you was tithing a hundred dollars, then you gonna pay back one twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Or like so I mean, and I guess you know if you was tithing a hundred and you only put fifty in, then I guess you are gonna pay the fifty. Uh, uh, would you pay sixty? Uh, yeah. Well, seven. Yeah. Well, you gonna pay a tenth of that part? You gonna pay a fifth of that part too? Which would be a fifth of 60 is what six three more dollars so you know what i'm saying like that's what you would that's what you would be doing if if you was borrowing from it uh let's look at a couple more scriptures let's go to um one more and then we're gonna go to genesis let's go to uh, numbers real fast numbers chapter uh let's see uh numbers chapter Now let's go to Deuteronomy 15 or 14. Yeah, Deuteronomy 14. And we're going to pick this up at verse 22. And then we're going to go, from here we're going to go to Cain and Abel. You know what I'm saying? And then we're going to leave it alone, kind of. Like, we're going to establish what the tie is you giving the 10. But from Cain and Abel, we're going to learn a little more. And then, because we're not going to be all night with it. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15. And let's pick this up. At verse, uh, I mean 14, and let's pick it up at verse 22. 22. Uh huh. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the fields bring it forth year by year, right? So he's saying, because, like, really, when you back then, mm -hmm. or even now, though, like, this is your livelihood, but this is how you ate, you would go mm -hmm. out and you planted your food. So he's he telling you what you plant, then you need to bring a tenth of it to the Lord. Yep. And it was so many dynamics to plant in your vineyard with the Lord. Like, you know, sometimes he would tell you every so many years, leave a piece of it where you don't mess with it mm -hmm. to let the poor come by yep. and give it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he's telling you that you are supposed to be tithing a tenth of your increase. You know what I'm saying? Like a tenth of what you get. And, and you get that back to the Lord. Now, nah. um, Let's go to Genesis real fast. Genesis. And we're going to go to chapter 4. And like really, if people who know me, I don't even, I don't think I have ever, uh, I have never, I don't think I have ever um, did a lesson on time. You know what I'm saying? Just because at the end of the day, coming from all these Sunday churches, man, they be trying to take your money. Mm -hmm. And really, what we offering you is free. But at the end of the day, you know, you got things like buildings and stuff like that. Like, you got to keep the lights on. And these mm -hmm. are the people's building. Like, this stuff belongs to the to the, the people. Churches. Like, all the churches, the schools that we got, the trucks, the vans. All, like, when I say it's the people's, like, it's, 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 it's not like 
uh, any of these pastors that work at Israel Church of Jesus is on payroll because none mm -hmm. of them not. I mean, maybe if you work at the school, you know, we got a school, yeah. like, that's a real job. People putting in 40 hours, and, you know, and they might be a teacher at, at, at Israel Church of Jesus yeah. also. You know what I'm saying? So they might be getting, and trust me, they ain't getting that much money because we ain't got that much. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I don't even like dealing with it too much, like, you know, as a lesson because I don't like to promote it. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to be giving your best to the Lord. And this is what ended up getting Cain and Abel. This is what got Cain in trouble in the mm -hmm. beginning because he was trying to come up short on what he was doing. Yep. So let's go look at um, Genesis chapter 4 and pick it up at verse uh, 1. Genesis 4 and 1. And Adam knew his wife, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Uh -huh. And she again bared, bared his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Yeah. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. So Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. Go ahead. And of the fat thereof. So like what they show you too is people been giving back to the Lord. From like day one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, go ahead. Keep reading. And the Lord have respect unto Abel uh -huh. and his offer. Uh -huh. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Right. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fall? uh -huh. fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well. Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Right. So now we're seeing that, you know, because tithe, we see Abraham pay tithe to this Melchizedek who was priest to the most high God. Really, he paid tithe to God. Mm -hmm. And then we're seeing that um, it's told that you're supposed to give your tenth of your increase. We've seen that in Deuteronomy 14. And it's like, and if you take any art from your tire, you got to replace back a fifth of it. And now we seeing, hey, in the story of Cain and Abel, like Cain, Abel gave what it said, and Abel, he also brought out the firstling of his flock and, the and of the fact thereof, uh, and the Lord had respect of it. Like he came and brought his best to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go look at this parable real quick. And we're going to look at something in Proverbs, and then we're going to try to cut it. Um, like like I said, we ain't gonna take all day on it. I know I got my brother waiting, but I do want to make sure we get it answered. And I think it's a great question, and I still haven't really answered it. Um, let's go to uh, hold on one second. Let's see. Let's try Mark chapter 12. Yeah, Mark 12. We'll try that. Mark chapter 12. And let's see. Around verse 40. All right, yeah. So let's pick it up at like verse 41. Mark chapter 12 and verse 41 and when you get there go ahead and read and jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much uh-huh so like you know people giving their money and many that's rich they casting in a whole lot go ahead and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mints uh -huh. which which makes a, a first a farthing. Yeah, so she had like basically it said she had like fifty cent. You know what I mean? And so she put her little fifty cent in. Go ahead. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Uh huh. For for all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her her want did cast in all that she had, even all her her living. Now, and, and, and answering the question, 
and not trying to get us in a position where we, um, you know, I don't, I, I, we're not reading this as if they giving all, you know, they taking all that they have. I'm just showing you she gave what she could give. If this mm -hmm. did have nothing to do, like, I, it ain't even really talking about a tent. She the poor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the Lord, he tell us the poor going to be here. But when you the poor, you try to do the best you can. But you poor. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying to the poor don't pay their tent. What I'm saying is when you read this, it was like, and he called unto his disciples and said to the very last saying to you that this poor widow have cast in more than all they which have cast in in the treasury. For all they for all they did cast in of their abundance. But she of her want did cast in all that she had. So like, you know, it's kind of like if this all I mean, if this all I got, this all I got. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But who you don't want to lie to is God. Like, God know what you got, yeah, what you don't you got, don't got yeah. and what you need and what you don't need. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, like, you think, you he tell you, and we're going to read this uh, so we can get an idea of it. But he tell you, a fool to raiment, be content. So let's go to Timothy and read that real quick. Because that be the issue, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? What do you actually need? And I ain't trying to say get your lights cut off, but I've been in the house with the lights cut off before. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying we made out just fine. So, I mean, I ain't trying to be funny on, on saying that, but I'm like, sometimes we get confused what we got to have and what we need. Um, let's turn to, uh, we're looking for where he said the food arraignment. Let's be content. That might be second Timothy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop looking and just... Mm, food, man. Raymond. One second. First Timothy chapter six, and we're gonna pick this up at uh. Let's pick it up at verse six. When you get there, go ahead and read. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh-huh. So that's something that you got to consider that, you know, at the end of the day, the gain God is greater gain than anything else. Go ahead. For we brought nothing in this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Go ahead. And having food and raiment, let's, let us be therefore content. Right. So that's what we got to think about, too, is what do we, what food and raiment, like everything else, like food is to eat and raiment is like clothes, like mm -hmm. so, it's not even telling you you got to keep a roof over your head. Like, I mean, it's not really. I mean, I mean, ideally, that's the American way, right? Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But at the end of the day, God ain't even telling you that part. He's saying as long as you can eat, as long as you can clothe yourself. So you have to keep that in consideration. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, let's. I'm, I want us to look at another scripture real quick before we go. To uh, 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 let's go to First Peter chapter five, and verse seven, and then we're gonna go look at one more, and then we're gonna kind of close it out. And I know, really, I ain't answer the question like you would think, cause I'm not trying to, because I'm not trying to tell nobody what to do with their money. Like the law, the commandments tell you to pay a tip. We know that. You wouldn't even be asking the question if you didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? We see in the scriptures where if you borrow from your tithe, then you got to get it back on the fifth. You know what I'm saying? So that lets us know you can actually borrow from your tithe. You know what I'm saying? If you seeing that you can, but you got to keep it real with yourself. Mm -hmm. Then we seen what this lady, she gave all she had. You know what I'm saying? Like really that at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like you, you that that's what God like God is the judge, not man. He's judging your heart, not Yeah. So it ain't for me to sit here and tell you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you wrong cause you ain't nah man, that ain't my business. First Peter chapter five, and we're gonna pick it up. I want us to read one verse. No, I want us to pick it up at verse five. First Peter chapter five and verse five. And then from here we're gonna go to Proverbs and I think we're gonna end it with that. So pick it up at first Peter chapter five and verse five. Likewise, ye younger, uh, submit yourselves unto the elders. Yea, all of you be subjected one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud 
and give your grace unto the humble. Uh -huh. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Right, so at the end of the day, he's saying that if you humble yourself before God, he's going to mm -hmm. exalt you anyway. Yep. Keep reading. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Right, and that's really what you need to be doing. Like, when you sit... When you're looking at it and you're asking yourself, what should an individual do who fell on hard times and can't afford the tithe? Like, I, my, my concern ain't the can't afford the tithe part. My concern is the falling on hard times part. And that, you know what I'm saying, getting yourself back up anyway. That's really what more of a concern is than whether you could pay some money. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, like, like really, at the end of the day, you want to try to improve that situation and get with pe the same people you paying your tithes to is the same mm -hmm. people you need to be going to. Come on, trying to see how to improve the situation if that makes sense. But um, <clears throat> let's go to um, yeah, let's go to Proverb, Proverb, chapter nineteen, verse seventeen. Proverb chapter nineteen, verse seventeen. Proverbs 19 and 17. And we're going to read that verse right there. Proverbs 19 and 17. And when you read that, go ahead. He that have pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. So like, and you got to realize, you, I ain't trying to be funny in the nature of the question, but you a poor man asking the question. So like, we supposed to have pity on the poor. So we supposed to have pity on the poor. God's going to definitely have mercy and pity on the poor. But keep reading. And that which he have given, will he pay pay him again? Right. And whatever you didn't gave to the poor, the Lord going to give back to you again. And there's other scriptures that's like lining up with that too. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, man, I showed you in the law where you could take a fifth. I mean, you got to pay your time back on the fifth, like with a fifth added. Um, I could put you in a deep hole if you going paycheck to paycheck and every paycheck you you taking a you feel like you're taking the Tim next thing you know you're gonna owe the Lord more than you owe the IRS. You know what I mean? Cause you keep cause you keep doing that. So at the end of the day, man, we seen what the lady did. She gave her best. I'm gonna do one more scripture. I'm sorry, Brother Lee. One more scripture, Acts chapter seven, and then we're gonna finish it with that. But we seen what the lady did, she gave all she could give. But here's one thing, not Acts 7, Acts chapter 5. Here's one thing in the situation or how you don't want to play it. Uh, we've seen that Abel gave his best. He didn't even say nothing about no tent. And then you have seen though, where the tent and the tire came from Abraham, mm -hmm. and he paid it to the Lord via Melchizedek. Acts chapter 5, let's pick it up at verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession yeah. and kept back part of the price. Uh -huh. His wife also being privy to it, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet. Uh -huh. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Okay. While it remaineth, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived, this thing in thine heart. Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. Uh -huh. And Ananias heard these words and fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Uh -huh. And the young men arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. That's good. So he said he was going to do something, give to the Lord, and he didn't do it. He, he cheated the system. Mm -hmm. And why he, it was his to do. Like, he you ain't have to say, oh, I'm going to pledge a million dollars, and then you only come in here, or, you you know, I'm going to sell this or whatever I get for it. You know, I'm going to sell get to the Lord, and then you come back, you know, 50 cents short and be lying about it. You know, so whatever you're going to do, you're going to do. Don't, you know, don't play with the Lord like that. But we see that the Lord has mercy. If you borrow him from your tithe, it's a fifth that you're supposed to pay back. We seen where the lady gave all that she had, and sometimes that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And really, I ain't going to add too much more to that. If Brother Lee want to add something to it, he definitely can. You there, Brother Lee? Yes, sir. All right, man. Nah, that, was, that was it. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, so I'm gonna, before I get off, I'm going to say um to you, I guess I'm going to be on next week, but I have maybe I'm tripping, but I thought I seen it. 
You was on the schedule for last week. Yeah. I don't want to just let you roll because you're rolling. Uh, well, I, I guess, but no, I'm, I mean, you could, you could, you could run it today, and then I got it next week. Cause obviously, I, I, I do come behind you every week. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, right, cool. and, and I guess he was on last week. I don't know. Maybe. I, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I just, I had oh, I see what's going on. Okay, I will tell you later, bro. I tell you later, but it's the calendar. It's messed up. All right, so yeah, all right, it's your week. Huh? All right. Yeah, it's your week, man. I see what's going on. Yeah, and then Lee come on after Nehemiah. It's just on the calendar that I'm looking at. It's March. Lee come on in March, and so then I would be think I was thinking I was coming on the first week in April. So I got you, man. I'm sorry, bro. Well, you got it, man. I'm gonna let you ride out with it, bro. Peace to you, Jesus name. <laughs> Uh, he's still in March. Uh, <laughs> I come after him. <laughs> so hey, I I know. Uh oh, let me you go ahead and hit that. <laughs>